Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to our collector session. It's great to see a full room. Uh, there's a few seats, I think, around if you want to come sit by someone up close. Um, my name is Jeff Shaner, and I'm a product manager within Esri's development group. And I'm joined here today by Doug Morgenthaler. Doug's the product owner from our, our collector team. And I think we have a few people in the room that are also part of our collector dev team. Can you just kind of raise your hands? All right, so these are the go-to people when you want to find out what's really going on. If it's something really good that you're doing with the collector, come to me if you're having troubles. <laughs> come to Doug, that'd be wonderful. Um, before we get going, how many people here have used Collector? All right. Well, that's what we thought was going to happen with this session. So we're going to do a, a couple of interesting things in this session. It could completely crash and burn on us. So sorry about that if it does, but we thought we'd have a little bit of fun with it. I won't spend a lot of time on what Collector is. Just give you those fundamentals if you haven't used it before. Collector's founded on a web map. So you spend that time investing in web maps and your identity within our platform, and you can take advantage of Collector. We've done a lot of work with um, external GNSS receivers and pairing Collector to it. How many people use Collector with an external GNSS receiver today? A few of you, okay. Uh, so we spent a bunch of time on that. Collector also works offline. How many people work offline? Most of you, great. Um, so uh, we're, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the data collection work that's happening. Ultimately, uh, what we've been seeing across the sectors and markets uh, that we uh, talk to customers um, uh, about that are using Collector, there's really about uh, a handful of different um, types of data collection work that gets done. One is actually building an asset inventory and being able to capture uh, spatial data with an insured accuracy, both in the spatial and the attribute uh, sense. Uh, there's also making observations, being able to handle unplanned, ev unplanned events, like emergency management based events. Uh, if you were in the plenary, you saw um, Atma and some of the team, the Python team, get up and talk about the Thomas fire. Well, actually, CAL FIRE uses Collector to do all their damage assessment work uh, on an event. And we see a lot of uh, adoption of collector for uh, emergency operations. So we thought we'd mention that. And an interesting one that's kind of come up the last couple of years is uh, using collector as a source of ground control for UAV flights. Um, if you were here, anyone here, was, was anyone here for the partner conference? Uh, you would have seen a demonstration, probably be also in the uh, plenary of the users conference, I would imagine, where uh, we did a, a water treatment plant in Yukaipa and we flew the whole water treatment plant. But we set up ground control and with Collector using a, an external GNSS receiver connected to an RTK network, we were able to gain uh, accuracy to, to two centimeters in the horizontal and roughly three to five centimeters in the vertical. And by doing that, we could really um, generate these high quality, highly accurate imagery products out of it. So Collector is being adopted for a lot of different things than we ever thought it would be. And I'm sure that you have a number of uh, interesting use cases as well. And you can see there's a huge list of different types of use cases here on the screen. Uh, a lot of these are solution templates. Has anyone used the solution templates that come with our products? Oh, perfect, because that's going to lead right into my first demo. Uh, so a lot of the things that you see listed here are templates that are available for you to just jumpstart your, um, your adoption and your use of uh, field data collection products. Last thing I'll mention before we try to get into doing some interesting things is uh, what we've done recently. So uh, we added the high uh, accuracy data collection capabilities last year, well actually two years ago. We've been refining them ever since. We implemented GPS averaging so that you can improve the precision of the data capture uh, that you do uh, using GPS. So we'll actually let you occupy a space, take a bunch of positions, compute the average, and then uh, we'll store the standard deviation uh, along with that um, collection that we do uh, in the GPS metadata that uh, we provide. 
some organizations uh, use a different method for calculating GPS accuracy. Uh, a lot of federal government agencies do that here in the United States. Uh, and it's based upon an algorithm that uses a 95% confidence interval, so we added that as a setting. Uh, for Android devices, Android users, we added support for Trimble Catalyst. Uh, we did a bunch of work, uh, like on Android, to support uh, external SD card support. So if you are working offline and you have very large base maps, uh, large TPKs, you could put them on an SD card, slide that into your phone or tablet, and just use it. Anyone here using a MDM in their organization? So an MDM is a mobile device management software. We've started to add some features uh, to support better integration with MDMs. Um, what we added first with Collector was the ability for you, if you're using ArcGIS Enterprise, to uh, configure the portal URL. And instead of having to type that out, if you're using ArcGIS Enterprise, you can put that into the configuration file and it streamlines um, the user setup so it goes right to their portal and they just enter in their username and password and off they go. And something we'll show you a, a little bit later is app integration. So obviously we talk about uh, field operations as this uh, suite of applications that work together to complete workflows. Uh, and to support that, uh, we've exposed this URL scheme that lets a collector be remotely controlled by other applications. That might be our workforce app, it might be a partner app. I'm gonna show you an example uh, later with a partner application. All right, let's get into some fun. What we wanted to do was, uh, the idea was kind of like a dueling banjos, but I found this really cool lightsaber uh, graphic on the web. Uh, and we're gonna go through a set of demonstrations. And instead of boring you with a bunch more slides, we thought we'd just show you a bunch of software with things that you may not normally know about with Collector. And given um, the response to the solution templates, I think that getting started with templates is a prime way to start. So that's my demo. And we'll start with that one. Now what I'm gonna do is go over to Arches Online. I've signed in uh, with a named user that has nothing. It's a level two named user. And I'm gonna use the templates to create a hosted feature service, create a web map, and then open it up and collect some data within Collector. So, if you haven't done this before, this is the process for doing it. I'm sitting in my content view, and I can click Create Feature Layer. And here's where all of these templates come into play, and we've organized them into different categories. So you can see them uh, based upon the industry or type of need. We've got these wonderful graphic thumbnails that uh, show meaningful information for you about uh, the type of um, template it is. But I don't wanna look through the 60 plus templates that we have, I'm gonna search instead for hydrant inspections. Hydrant maintenance, I'll just search for hydrant. Hydrant maintenance inspections, and I'm gonna grab that. And I'm gonna create a new hosted feature service from it. And this hosted feature service has both a hydrant's feature layer to it as well as a related table for the inspection. So you can do one to many relationships between hydrants and their inspections. You'll notice, and this is something new, if you had used the templates, uh, we can add in the ability to capture the GPS receiver information. So if you're using one of those external GNSS receivers, whenever you collect new point features, we'll stamp onto that feature a whole bunch of metadata. Things like the receiver type, the accuracy, um, the elevation value, uh, all of that comes uh, as part of this metadata that you add to the layer. We also have a, a toolbox and a GitHub repo uh, that you can download and just use it with either ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro and add those to a feature class before you publish if you're using ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro to publish. The next step in this wizard is to just find the area that you're working in. I've grabbed some data from around San Diego Unlike Doug, who went and driving around in Palm Springs to actually find some hydrants and capture them, I took the lazy approach and grabbed something online. So I'll roughly say that's San Diego, and I'll say hydrant inspections uh, dev summit. 
as the name of the feature service that I'm going to create. Hit done. That's going to now create a new hosted feature service for me. That's my template for how I need to create new data inside of ArcGIS Online, and it's just right there for me. Now, uh, when this completes, uh, we can start to construct the web map. We can do some more things in the item details. I did want to mention that this is also now available inside of ArcGIS Enterprise. So all these templates are not only in online, they're also in ArcGIS Enterprise. So right away, you see it takes us to the item details page, right? And this item details page, if you haven't uh, spent a lot of time with it, evolved over the course of last year. A lot of changes went into it to improve the user experience, but also a number of new features uh, came in as well. So what you can do in the item details, you see that here we have the layer that's hydrants, we have the table that's the inspections. One of the key things I want to do first is that I want to be able to take pictures of those hydrants and pictures when I'm doing the inspections, so I'm going to enable attachments. You can see that's done at the layer level here. I can just click enable and enable. I can do that right on the layer itself. Um, now, if I go over to the data tab, here you can see it's obviously just an empty schema, right? And here are the list of fields that are part of that schema. If you weren't aware of it, inside of hosted feature services in ArcGIS Online, you can modify the schema. And I can do that right from the item details page. So I can click add field, and here I could add a field, let's just call it status, give it an alias name. I'm going to keep it as a string field. Um, and I'll even give it a default value of as built. Now, if you're like us on the collector team, and I really encourage you to do this, go and harass the ArcGIS Online team at their island area and say, when are you going to support coded value domains in there? <laughs> All right? So you go tell them that, please. And say that Doug Morgenthaler sent you. <laughs> Doug's going to love me for this. All right, so now I've uh, added the field onto the feature layer. Um, so I can change the schema here if I want. I could also, if I wanted to, Oops. Uh, I could uh, click and delete a field. Uh, I could do calculates against a field right here inside the item details if I want. Um, I can visualize uh, the, the, the layer itself. And the interesting thing about that uh, that I encourage you to look at is in here, it's kind of like a mini version of the ArcGIS viewer. So I can set up the layer itself. And some of the things I could set up include the pop-ups. And as you know from being collector users, the pop-up drives the form experience inside of collector, right? So if I save this at the layer level, anytime I add that to a web map, it's already configured for me. It's like a layer file if you're used to doing that with ArcGIS Server in the past. I'm just going to make sure that our new status attribute shows up and is in there. It's already there. Um, so I can just hit OK. I could change the names of the aliases and all that kind of stuff if I want. Um, and here you see the symbology of this layer as well. Um, and then I can just say save layer, right? And that's saving all that information to the layer. So if you want to change the symbology, have that all affected at the layer level. So each time you add that layer into the web map, it's just automatically done for you there. Here you can get at usage information. Uh, and there's some settings. We're going to come back to the settings a little bit later, but the thing to note about settings is that you can control the behavior of a layer inside of Collector by modifying some of these settings. You can see uh, editing is enabled. That's important for um, uh, Collector, obviously. Also, uh, knowing who created uh, what um, feature uh, or updated it, getting their identity as part of that is important. Sync gives you the offline capability. Uh, and here you can control the editing behavior. And that changes uh, how the uh, layer works inside a collector itself. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to add it to a new map. Because ultimately, collector works with a web map, right? So this is down in the San Diego area. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. We'll get over to the Bay Area in uh, San Diego. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this as 
hydrant ds. Uh, wonderful name. I'm going to make sure I add some very relevant metadata tags and save the map. And I'm purposely going to make a mistake on something uh, so you can see it. And I'll just kind of look over here. Well, it's not really a mistake per se, but you'll see something that's grayed out there, giving you lots of hints. Um, so now I've got my web map, I've got my feature service, I've got the hydrants layer, I don't have any data, but I can flip over to my iPad and I can open up a collector on number three. Since we can't see the screen at all, can someone give me a thumbs up that is actually showing the iPad? All right, and I'm gonna start collector. And there uh, is the new map. And so collector uses your identity to find the maps that are shared within your account. Now, since I'm the owner of this map and the service, it's really easy, it just shows up. If I wanted Doug to, to use it, I'd have to share that into a group so that uh, Doug can access that or share it across the organization, which I probably wouldn't want to do given some of the people I know who are in this org. Um, Sync is enabled, so on the iPad you can see the puffy little cloud so I could download it if I wanted to. I'm just going to tap on the map and I'm going to open it up. And it takes us right to our current location, which kind of sucks because we're in Palm Springs, not San Diego. But I'm just going to move back over with uh, the base map tool and see that I'm here. Now here's where the problem comes in. I've got no editable layers. What's going on? Anyone know what that problem is? It's a scale dependency, right? I said scale dependency. So collector's responsive to the scale dependency when you go to collect data. And what I should have done in that web map is probably change the scale dependency given, uh, given what I was doing there. But I did that on purpose just to show you that. And so as I zoom in, you can see on the panel on the right, now hydrants appear because um, because we're within the scale uh, threshold of, of, of uh, its visibility. Um, because we're also not in San Diego, um, I'm not going to tap on the feature template to create a new feature. And you may not have known this functionality existed either. I'm going to just press and hold to take a long press. And it, you can see reverse geocodes shows our lat long as well. And from the action button, I can say collect here. Um, so when I say collect here, it should have taught, took me through that. Yeah, well, so I still had to pick the feature template. Obviously, I haven't done this demo in a little while. And now I can fill out the attribute information. You can see the default value of as built showed up. Um, if I take this off. I can take a picture of all of you. So pretend to be a fire hydrant. There we go. Picture of a picture of fire hydrant. Um, and uh, inside of the collect experience, you could update the location if you wanted using the GPS or, you know, we could tap along the map to set the proper location if we can't access that specific spot. And then I can fill out the attribute details like the manufacturer of the um, actual hydrant and whatnot and hit submit. And then once I've submitted that feature, I've got the new hydrant location uh, and right away, you'll see that it's got the relationship, so I can create a new inspection of that hydrant, capture the PSI, I don't know, 50 PSI, and the inspector information, and then the, those details of whatever inspection process I'm doing, so maybe it's a hydrant flush or whatnot. And now I've got a new feature, so I'm doing my asset inventory, and I'm doing my inspection right away, and I set that all up uh, using a template, right? Um, and that's how quickly you can get started uh, with Collector. So we wanted to show you first, in the first demo, all about creating um, feature services with the templates we provide. And obviously you can customize that too if you want to get started with it. Uh, you can get up and going really quickly. Uh, and like I also showed you, it also includes the GPS field. So you can, if you just want to rapidly get out there, collect some data, capture them with the GPS receiver, get it nice and accurate. This is a really quick and easy way to do that. Next demo I'm going to pass to Doug is, well, I did this publishing inside of ArcMap, or sorry, inside of ArcGIS Online directly in a host of feature services. 
Doug can use ArcGIS Pro to do that. All right. Can I see ArcGIS Pro up on the screen? Great, thanks. Okay, so Jeff showed how you can do that from a web browser. We also have ArcGIS Pro at our fingertips. How many of you typically use ArcGIS or using ArcGIS Pro now? Okay, a handful of you. So there's some really great things that make working and creating projects for and web maps for collector uh, using ArcGIS Pro. So we're going to walk through a couple of those really quickly. So the first thing here is I've got a map uh, and that has a, a layer uh, that is in a file geodatabase in my project. And it's also the same schema that Jeff just showed, the hydrant inspections. So the first thing we want to do is set a few things up so that when we go to Collector, we have things set up the way we'd like. So there are a number of things that you can do to help make your workers uh, more efficient. So the first thing is how do I get access to the, t the types of features I'm going to create. So here we have our create features uh, window here and we have a template for our hydrant. I can go in and modify that, that template. So I can say I'd like to, all of the hydrants I'm collecting generally, they're operable. So I'm going to go ahead and set a default value. I may also decide, hey, there's a particular uh, manufacturer that we typically install. Uh, so I can set those up in front so that when I go to collect that hydrant, that information's already predefined for me. Now, you can do more with templates than just set default values. What we're going to do here is we're going to create another version of this same hydrant <coughs> template. So I'm going to hit duplicate. And in this case, I'm going to give it a different name, hydrant other manufacturer. And again, I can do the same sort of thing. I can say I want to make this uh, empty because in this case, this is sort of my all other, in case, of, in case we had install something that's not a, an M and H. All right, so now we'll go ahead and hit uh, OK, and now you can see we have two templates. So you can build these out. You can make as many of them as make sense for your customers, uh, your mobile workers, so that they can have as much of the attributes predefined simply by picking the right type of feature that they're collecting. OK, so one, something else that we wanted to do is if, for inspections, we oftentimes need to go to a specific hydrant. And that hydrant is typically has a unique identifier. So we're going to set up in our map the ability to use the information for the hydrant's attributes to do a search. So we're going to add in our, we're going to add a locate provider and we're going to use our layer. We're going to use our hydrants layer. And you can see now we have a list of fields, which we also have, have all of the GPS metadata fields on this as well, so there's quite a few fields. Um, it's defaulted the global ID, which I know I can't ever remember global IDs, so maybe you guys are better than me. Uh, but there's a well-known uh, facility identifier, and that's just an, an alphanumeric string. I can set that to be a, an exact match, or I can do a contains. So I can just type in part of that string and get that information back. Okay, so a couple of other things that we want uh, to look at here is for our layer. Jeff mentioned this setting a scale dependency. I can set that for my layer here uh, on the appearance tab. So if I wanna, don't want to see these too far out, so let's say maybe at 100,000, I, that seems about right. I don't want to complicate my map too much when I'm working uh, at, at a higher scale. I can do that. And now, once I've got the map and the layer the way I want, uh, want to use it, I can just share that uh, either as a web layer, which is kind of how you would have done that in ArcMap. You would have shared that as a service. Uh, but I can take that and do this in one step by sharing the entire web map. So that's doing both, creating both the web map, but it's also publishing that hydrants layer as well as the hydrant inspection related table here. 
So I'm going to give this map a name. And a summary. And then, of course, as Jeff mentioned, I need to be able to configure who has access to this map. So in this case, I'm going to share that directly with the group here. Then I'm going to look and you can see that I've got my layer, my hydrants layer that I can define. I can say I want that to be editable. I want to be able to take it offline, so I want to make that something I can sync. And that's fine. And now I can publish that. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. But basically, you'd get the same experience in Collector once I publish this web map as Jeff did when he went through the browser. So you can take advantage of ArcGIS Pro to do that same publishing experience as you had before. OK, now we talked about templates. Uh, let's take a look at another way to get started in Pro uh, using templates. So the, Arc the Solutions team has uh, created an, an add-in. It's called the Arc ArcGIS Solutions Deployment Tool. So the ArcGIS Solutions Deployment Tool is a, uh, basically it's an add-in. It has a series of tasks that allow me to go through the same steps that we did, but it, does, it takes care of a lot of that legwork for me. So I'm going to deploy an ArcGIS solution. And this template is not just, uh, the solution deployment tool can be used for things beyond Collector. There are many uh, web mapping, uh, web app applications. And uh, as well as uh, operations dashboards uh, that you can do. So here I'm going to do the stormwater, and we'll just sift through these. Let's see if we can get our stormwater inlet inventory and inspection. Before I do that, I'll just point out a couple of things. I can define when I create the solution whether I want to use. Uh, an existing my existing organization's default base map. I can have it add the GPS metadata. And something that you can't do uh, using the templates that Jeff showed in ArcGIS Online is that I can, if I'm going to use a different projection, I can set that up. For, so if I'm using a state plane, NAT83, uh, I could go ahead and define that here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and tap on inland inventory. And I'm going to go ahead and deploy that solution. It's pretty easy, right? Not too many things to do here. So what it's doing is it's creating that feature layer. It's creating that web map. And it's setting everything up based on the best practices of those templates that the solutions team uh, provides. Now, once this is finished, uh, we'll take a look at one of the other uh, capabilities that's also in this solutions deployment tool to address some of the things that are inherently problematic in templates, which is they're never exactly what you want. So uh, once this is finished, we'll be able to go through and modify that solution, uh, that template, such that I can add fields, I can change coded value domains, um, and get things set up to address the case, the things that I need to see in, uh, I need my mobile workers to see when they're out in the field. All right. I talked long enough that it finished, thankfully. OK, so the next thing we want to do is configure an ArcGIS solution. So this is going to walk us through a couple of processes. So the first step is, again, I can add some fields. If there, if there are fields that aren't present in the template that I need, I can just go ahead and add those here. In this case, uh, I'm going to make some changes to, let's see here, let me grab the. Inlet. I want to make changes to my inlet layer. So it's loading my fields here, and then I'm going to be able to pick. No. Actually, I'm not going to add a field. I'm just going to modify an existing field here. Sorry about that. So I'm going to skip that step. Certainly don't need to do that. I'll go through. Uh, 
again, grab my inlet feature layer. It's going to load those fields. And then I can pick the fields that I want to, to update, uh, coded value domains for them. So I have this owned by field. So uh, as you might expect in a template, that uh, I assume that your entity is not called our agency. So we'll just type in city of Palm Springs. And we'll go ahead and run that. And that's updating uh, the domain on the service directly. I don't have to republish. Uh, that's just going to be directly available in Collector. Uh, and we'll do uh, another one here as well. We can do that on uh, the managed by field here. We'll do the same. We'll update our agency to the city of Palm Springs. And now that we're finished with that, we'll go ahead and take a look at what we just created. So I'm going to grab the iPad here. Uh, actually, I can probably do it. Just do it here. Yeah, sure. All right, so we're going to fire a collector here on our Windows machine. And I'm signed in as the same user. So we can see that we have in, inlet inventory and inspection. So we can just open that map here in collector. You see I have uh, my templates. When I pick a template, start creating that feature, I come down here and I see owned by, and I see that I now see that default value being the city of Palm Springs. So this is just another example of how you can take those templates, use the solutions deployment tool uh, to quickly get started with those best practices. Back to you. Good. All right. Uh, you see my screen again? Sorry, we can't see what's up there, so. Yeah, so Doug showed you the solution deployment tool and how quickly you can also use those templates uh, directly inside of ArcGIS Pro. Next thing I wanted to show you back into online is the append capability that was added in one of the more recent releases of ArcGIS Online. So I created this empty schema of hydrants, right? But what if I had a CSV file that included all the hydrants? Could I just load them into that layer? Well, there's a new append capability in ArcGIS Online that lets me do just that. So here I have um, a spreadsheet with a number of hydrants that are in it. We've got a lat long field inside of the hydrants uh, CSV file as well. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make a couple of changes. So I'm back to the item details page inside of um, the feature service that I just created. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do first, and I'm only going to have to do this for the next couple of months, and I really, really encourage you to think carefully before you do this if you have users that work offline is I am going to uncheck this button. It can be really dangerous to uncheck this button. But right now, a pen doesn't work with sync enabled feature services. Um, we beat up the feature service team. They're fixing it. It's in the update in April. Uh, so I'm going to hit save on that. And I'm going to come over to the data tab as well. And something else that I forgot to show you that I wanted to, oh, sorry, on the visualization tab, I mean. Um, and really important for those collector workflows that's it's great to set on the layer is that I can set a refresh interval. So if you've got a dashboard that's working against the uh, same layer and you want to see those updates that are coming in as data is getting collected, set a refresh interval. And let's just make the server go wild by doing that every 10 seconds. All right. Uh, and so either on the data tab or in the overview tab, uh, now you see update data appear. And from update data, I can say append data to layer. I can choose this um, CSV file that I have, say update and continue. Um, now, if I wanted to update existing features, I could do that, but we don't have any features. So I can show the field matching that's going on from my CSV file uh, to the schema that I have. You see things like 
flow is there, install date is there, uh, it's matched the latitude and longitude automatically for me, the manufacturer, the status. And I could go in and if there's other fields potentially that map up based on the field type, set up that field mapping. And then when I'm ready, hit apply updates. And what that did then is when I go into the table, look, we've got all of our new fire hydrants in there uh, and we can uh, visualize that uh, data as well. And I will go right now and turn off, no, I guess I can't in there. Something else we gotta talk to the team about, but all those hydrants should be right up here in La Jolla uh, once we get into the area that they are uh, coming from. So you can see all that data got uploaded automatically. So Append's a great new capability that's inside of host of future services. Can you specify which fields to keep if you have, you know, which dominant fields for the last? Um, so which fields to map to? Um, so when you're updating, actually be able to choose which fields, yeah. Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Do you know the answer to that one? No. We don't know the answer to that one. We're just making these up on the fly here. Uh, but we can find out for you. Uh, you can definitely, when you're loading new data, choose, choose to map or not map fields. I would hope you can do that. Um, and if you can't, then please go slap around the feature service team in the island area and tell them Doug sent you. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's, that's the append demo. Jeff, you append to your related table? Yes, you can. You can choose which layer you want to append to, and that can be the related table as well. Yes. Make sure you map those properly with your primary and forward keys, though. All right, so append, uh, I mentioned the sync support coming um, in April. Uh, great for using with the templates. You can update those existing features of which we don't know if you can map the field properly or not. Um, and with that, I'm gonna pass it to Doug to another cool new capability which is all centered around feature service views. So right, which one uh, do you go want? To the, uh, five, please. Five. Okay, so how many of you have heard or have used feature service views? You will want to use feature service views. So let's talk about what we mean when we talk about a feature service view. So here, let's go into our account and our gist and line. And I've got a few uh, feature layers here as well as some uh, web maps. Now, for many scenarios, you may want to have one single source of information. It's got all of the information that you are capturing, managing, and collecting. But not everyone who needs to see that data needs to see all of that or needs to have all of those same capabilities. So let's take a look here at a, our, our feature layer, which is this is just a hosted feature layer, so our hydrant maintenance layer. So from the item details page, uh, let's take a look here at the settings. So this is, you know, we of course have support for editing, we have uh, editor tracking, we support sync, everyone can edit anything, right? I don't know if you guys want your mobile workers doing that, but I know lots of people that don't. However, there are ways without, for people to have access to this data and you to allow a, a limited access to them to do what you want them to be able to do and let them see what you want them to see. So if we go back to the overview tab here, there's this uh, <clears throat> button on the right hand side here that says create view layer. So the create view layer basically is going to create, if you're familiar with database views, it basically creates a reference to your source layer here, which was the hydrant maintenance layer. And I can give it a name um, and I will, I'm going to just create one. It's very fast. This does not copy your data, it's just storing a reference. However, what it is creating is a new item that you can then modify to suit your needs. All right, so now I could come in and change 
what people see. So for example, maybe I don't want to let them edit this. Maybe this is my view layer that I want people in the front office to be able to see or something that I want to make publicly available. But I can do a lot more than that. I can come in and set up what we call a vis the visualization. And I can control what people see. So for example, I can say, I only want you to see features of a, that match a certain criteria or a certain area. So I, I can define, and I can also define which fields they can see. So maybe I do, for the public view, or uh, I can just have a, a couple of fields that, you know, just kind of high level, give them the, the necessary information from a public perspective. You don't want to expose all of that information that you're maintaining for maintaining your assets. Okay, so I've created a couple of these ahead of time. Um, I just want to look at, a, at one or two of these. So I created one uh, here, and it's, see, it's a hydrant maintenance inspections only. So obviously there's some folks in the organization that may go out and be doing asset inventory. We're doing a new subdivision, we're capturing those new water utilities. But I have other people in the organization that are just going out and they're inspecting the assets. Now, I, want, I don't want them to be able to modify anything on the hydrant it, itself. All I want them to be able to do is add inspections. So I can override some of those same settings. So here you can see that I have adding and updating features only. So in this case, they can only add records. They can't delete an inspection. They can't do anything like that. If anyone that has access to that original hydrant maintenance layer can do whatever they need to do. So your admins can continue to work effectively. Now what happens when you put this in a collector? So, let's see here, I'm in three. All right, where are we here? Let some tiles come in. So I've opened a map that has this hydrant maintenance inspections only layer in it. It's just a layer. You can use it just like you would <coughs> any other feature layer in your map. The difference here, of course, is that I can't create anything. So you'll notice my collect button is not present. So if I had any hydrants in here, which I don't, unfortunately, all I could do is go in and tap on it. I wouldn't be able to edit that hydrant I would just be able to add an inspection record. So it's an easy way for you to not have to rehost your data. It's still only one version of your, of your data that you're collecting and managing, but an easy way for you to uh, limit what people can do, uh, make it and tailor it to the, to the workflows that you need to support. Okay, uh, Jeff, do you wanna go back to the slides? That is four. Got your first slide. Not that you can so, see. so this is just kind of a, a graphic representation of what we were just looking at. So again, that you, at the bottom you have that feature layer, that hosted feature layer that you've that you've created, and then in this case you may have created a number of feature service views uh, that give you a different visualization as well as access to that information. Now, some people, of course, you know, one of the concerns has always been, well, yeah, I can hide the fields in the pop-up, but if somebody goes to the REST endpoint, they can see everything. Well, not with this. They do not, they can't access anything that you have not defined as available in that view. So it is truly locked down to what you want them to see. Now, one other thing just to mention for collector, um, you can go to the next slide, is, uh, in cases where you may have data that you want to take offline, and but you want to have two layers referencing the same feature layer, under, underlying feature layer. So you may have a definition query uh, proposed versus as built. And you want to take that offline. Well, right now in Collector, that is that does not work unless you create feature service views with those two definition queries and add those two, two layers to your map. If you now take that map offline, you'll be able to get the full experience that you want, be able to turn each layer on or off, uh, and 
again, continue to interact and edit as you would expect to, as you do when you're online. So just a, a workflow that I know we've talked to a number of folks who've wanted to be able to take that uh, type of web map offline. This is one way to do that using feature service views. Cool. Thanks, Doug. Um, the next thing that I wanted to show you is app integration. Uh, we talked about it right at the start of the presentation, but let's take a look at it uh, on a mobile device through a partner application. My iPhone up? It is. So what you're looking at is uh, CityWorks Mobile. Is anyone here a CityWorks customer? Well, I'm going to probably trash this demo because I don't know anything about CityWorks Mobile. Um, but Becky was kind enough to give me um, uh, an install that I could use. So within CityWorks Mobile, I have a number of, uh, we really have this theme of hydrant inspections. I don't know, we, we like hydrants a lot in our development group, I guess. We do do other things besides hydrants, but just so you know. But here I've got a number of hydrant inspections that have been assigned to me as work orders. I can go uh, to my inbox and take a look at them. I can tap on one of the details inside of the CityWorks mobile application and see it. Now, one of the things I can do is complete that hydrant install um, directly through Collector. So when I tap the action button at the top, you can see Collector for ArcGIS here. And when I tap Collector for ArcGIS, it uh, automatically uh, opens up Collector. I've been signed in as that same user. It takes me to the web map um, that's associated with that app integration, drops me to the location of that exact work assignment. So I can literally go and say collect here, uh, say that it's an in-service fire hydrant, fill out all of the information about it, take a photo of course, Becky will be looking at this later so you better all smile, make sure you're happy with what I'm showing you. Um, and uh, complete it. And then I can go back to CityWorks Mobile and complete the work order and my app integration is, uh, is, is complete and, I, and I'm done with the work that, I, that I've set out to do. Just like you could do that with our applications using Workforce and jumping to Collector. Or as you might have seen in the plenary of the Developer Summit where in Adma's demonstration, he actually moved the boundary line of a fire perimeter and using Python, uh, that generated a text message that had that same URL scheme uh, and it let him open up Collector and go directly to the um, uh, buildings that he needed to go assess. So the app integration piece, uh, it's in a GitHub repo, uh, and you can go and look at all the documentation around that. It's uh, working with uh, our applications. Collector also has uh, integrations with Navigator, so you can go from Collector and remotely open up Navigator. All of our apps are doing this now. Uh, and a lot, uh, one common pattern that we've seen is uh, people actually going from a custom pop-up in Collector over to Survey123 uh, using its app integration to complete out a uh, smart form. What you can do with this app integration, and you kind of saw most of it here, you can open up a web map, uh, you can center at a location, you can uh, initiate a new feature collection, and you can also pass in there a bunch of default attributes to uh, automatically populate onto that new feature. The only detail on that is that uh, you should make sure that the uh, attributes are URL encoded. And we give examples in the GitHub repo on how you can do all that. So with all of those demos, the last big one is really what's coming next with Collector and that's the Aurora project. And before Doug goes into that demo, is anyone here in our beta program for Aurora? One or two? The rest of you, why are you not in that beta program yet? You all use Collector. Yeah, the beta program right now is on the iOS platform. Uh, we're yet to deliver an, an Android beta, but I really encourage you uh, to join it. And you have to just email collectorbeta at esri.com or look at the blog sites, just search for Aurora. Uh, and you'll find uh, how to sign up uh, there. And Doug and I get those emails and we add you into the test flight beta. Are we, when we get to do in Windows, which we have not even started yet, yes, we absolutely will. Yes. Doug? All right. 
Now I know the iPhone's not up because it just disconnected. <laughs> I don't even have to ask yet. All right. Oh, All right. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to take you guys through a quick tour of Aurora. So this is obviously on an iPhone. We've spent a lot of time listening to you guys over the past five or so years uh, with Collector. We've tried to make a, a number of improvements. And so one of the key improvements is a great looking map. So this is a map of the Thomas Fire uh, from uh, in Ventura County. And a couple of things to note. Um, one, I get labels. Uh, I also get uh, there we go, there we go, and then, but not just labels, labels with Arcade. So if you guys are using Arcade, you can really get some great labeling going on. You can get a lot of information on that map without ever having to tap and look at a pop-up. In addition, uh, we are also supporting advanced symbology. So if any of you work with uh, the wildfire community, uh, uncontrolled fire edges look like uncontrolled fire edges. If they don't look like that, they don't know what they are. So you know, with Aurora, we can now really provide rich cartographic support uh, to really represent the information that you need to have on that map. In addition, uh, let's take a look. We can obviously rotate the map. You'll notice that, again, those labels are rotating, as are the ones in the base map, because we're now using vector tiles instead of just supporting raster tiles. So uh, if you want that great high quality cartography with our base maps or some of your base maps that you may publish with vector tiles, uh, those are things you can absolutely take advantage of in Collector today and Aurora. All right, so a couple of other things. Uh, obviously, we part of the reason that you guys use Collector is because you have to do work out in the field uh, and do data collection and inspection. So we've really taken a, a fresh look at the data collection experience. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to center on my location here. And then you'll notice that uh, I have this plus button at the bottom. One of the things that we heard was how to, this is obviously a key capability of Collector that's the reason the app exists. Make it easier to find. Uh, so we'll go ahead and tap on the plus here. And I now need to start collecting and defining the location of this particular feature. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, find a particular uh, type of feature. So this is my, fe my feature templates. And you'll notice that I have this reticle. We changed the experience for working with uh, when you're defining the location of your features, points, lines, and polygons uh, to use this cursor on target approach. So you'll see I have a reticle here and I have this blue halo there that's indicating I'm within GPS uh, accuracy. Now, of course, I can continue, continue to use that location. If my GPS moves, I can just quickly hit this update point button here uh, to reset that to my GPS if I've drifted a little bit or I've got better accuracy. Uh, hopefully, I'm not collecting a spot fire exactly where I am. So I, will, I would like to be able to say I'm going to do this in an area that uh, I can see. Uh, and I can just easily slide that map uh, and have that cursor and again hit update point. And now that it's, it's using that location uh, instead of the, the previous location I defined with my GPS. Most of the time, we hear from you guys that you guys are taking photos when you're doing asset uh, collection. So we've promoted the ability to take a photo. It's right there on the form. Uh, we'll get uh, a picture of Jeffrey for posterity. My demos were on fire, right? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, I can access the rest of the information. What's one of the things we really, uh, you know, we know that is a, is a real challenge is that you are looking and trying to do a lot on a very small form factor. So I can quickly move between map and form just by simply sliding up this panel. So I don't have to switch between where's the map button, where's the form button. I can quickly utilize this panel to see the, what I need to see in the context in which I'm working, 
when I'm ready to move on, I can, I can make those changes. All right, so I'll go ahead and fill out a couple of inf bit of information here and go ahead and hit submit. All right, so we don't have a ton of time, so I'm just gonna do w one more thing, um, and that's just do a quick feature search here uh, for a drop point. And you see that I have a feature here and that's nearby. So I can, if I pull up my panel here, I can see I get access, of course, to the attributes of that drop point, but I also get a number of actions I can take. Uh, one of those is directions. So uh, we all, of course, continue to support Navigator. Uh, if you're using Navigator on your own lease roads or you're including your assets, we do that, but we also allow you to use the third party uh, providers if you're going to get uh, directions, we'll just go out and you can utilize those apps as well. But in this case, I'm gonna be doing line of sight travel uh, just uh, as the crow flies. So I'm gonna use uh, the compass and I can quickly get uh, to that location. You can see in the banner up top, I see that I have, I've got a mile to go. It's gonna take me a while. I'm sure. Um, I'm and as I, uh, as I rotate the device, I can see what direction I need to head. I'm sure my magnetic personality is throwing the compass. <laughs> <laughs> I got so but this is just a quick look at Aurora. As Jeff mentioned, we really want, uh, there's much more uh, coming and there's a lot already in the beta. And um, we'd love to see your guys contribute uh, and give us feedback on what we've got right and, uh, and what else you guys would like to see. Great. I think we had a couple of closing slides on that. I don't know if you want to talk about those at all, Doug. I can go through them if you'd like. Yeah, I can. It's kind of hard to see it for you. So uh, a couple of things, you know, that I wanted to highlight. One is, one is offline, which we didn't demonstrate. If you come to the Road Ahead session, if you're brave enough to stick around here and not go out to the party at 5.30 tomorrow. Yeah, we got the shorts. We, we have the 5.30, 6.30 session. We'll spend a lot more time looking at Aurora. Um, one of the things that we've really been working on is adding offline support. Uh, and better offline support. So I mentioned vector tiles. So vector tiles now are something that you can take offline, um, especially for really large areas. You can get you know, a whole state's worth of information offline if you're taking, for example, our, uh, our streets-based map or something along those lines. Um, we've, we are supporting what, what we've always had in Collector, which we've kind of termed the ad hoc uh, offline experience, which is where you, uh, the, the mobile worker defines the area in which they work, wanna work. We're also adding a new capability and a new experience, which is really what we're calling pre-planned offline. And pre-planned offline is about you as the GIS administrator being able to define those areas up front to simplify that mobile worker's experience. So when they say, I wanna take this map offline, all I have to do is pick it. I've, you've given it a name. You said they know they're gonna be working in this area. They have no decisions to make. It, all it does is download the device and they're off and running. So that's something that's coming uh, very soon in the, uh, in the beta. Uh, we will demo it uh, a little bit tomorrow. Or if you guys are interested and can't make it or really don't wanna stick around until 5.30, uh, feel free to come down to the island. Uh, a number of us have it on, on devices down there. I think maybe one last thing to mention about what's coming, and it's in the bottom part of the slide. And this is a real, this is really an evolution of the pop-up is one way to think about it, is Smarter Forms and Collector. So we're working with the online team, we're working with the pro team to evolve the definition of the pop-up so that there's actually a form type inside of it. So that you can have things like conditional statements. We can bring uh, more input types. We've actually started to build in barcode uh, support now. We have audio attachment support, having the required fields, executing on arcade expressions, leveraging the new attribute rules that has come to life initially through um, the utility network, but is a part of the new implementation of the geodatabase. So look for a lot of new capabilities coming in the forms aspect of Collector uh, in the near future as well. With that, I think we've completely run out of time. Um, so thank you very much for coming today. Uh, and if you have questions, we'll have to take them up here. Thank you.